On Freedom Watch, we've tracked not just the most obvious, grandiose actions of our ever-expanding government, but also the everyday civil liberties violations that often go unnoticed. The war on drugs is the most common reason for the use of extreme tactics by local police. SWAT raids and even the use of military hardware are regrettably becoming more and more common. But what does it take for a home to become a target of a SWAT raid? Do you really have to be a terrorist cell? A major drug kingpin with several armed guards at your door? Answer no. Sometimes, unfortunately, you could be the target of a SWAT raid even on the mere suspicion of an anonymous informant that you may possess enough drugs to make you a likely dealer. And many innocents have been killed in such raids. In Columbia, Missouri, the police raided a family home eight days after getting a search warrant against the head of the home. During those eight days, they might have had the opportunity to observe the home and have learned that there were children inside, there were dogs inside, and there was no evidence of any drugs inside. They only found a little bit of marijuana residue inside a pipe. Instead of doing this, they performed a SWAT-style raid. They shot both family dogs, killing one. They terrified the children and the family, who were put in far greater danger from the raid than they ever were from anything that took place inside that house. Let's take a look at the footage of the SWAT team itself that it shot on the raid. Columbia Police, search for was America, not East Germany or Nazi Germany, but Middle America. Joining us now is Mayor Bob McDavid and Mike Ferguson. Mike is the host of the Mike Ferguson Show on KSSZ, where they've been following and reporting on the case. The new mayor of Columbia, Missouri, Bob McDavid, who came to office after the raid, is now left trying to salvage the reputation of the police who did this. But can that be done as long as drug raids remain common? Joining me now is the man in charge of the local administration, Mayor Bob McDavid. Mayor, welcome to Freedom Watch. Uh, good afternoon. When are the cops who did this going to be arrested and put in jail where they belong? Well, we uh, are right now, we've started a process to, uh, to look at all the facts. You know all the facts basically that I do. A lot of the facts are in that video, which... That video uh, is, is certainly very disturbing. Um, the, uh, the process is going to go like this. First of all, let me say this, that the chief of police told me this morning, and will announce at a press conference this afternoon, four initiatives. The first is the threshold for using a SWAT team in Columbia, Missouri, will be raised dramatically. Right. Um, we can't be... We can't be uh, using this type of police action for nonviolent crime. That's obvious. The second uh, initiative is that the, act the intelligence needs to be actionable. Uh, we can't be obtaining a search warrant, waiting eight days, and then throwing a SWAT team in on this information. That, that information is old. It's not useful. Um, the new initiative, I'm told by the police chief, will involve action uh, within eight hours of the issuance of the warrant. Um, the, the intelligence absolutely has to be accurate. The third initiative is that the responsibility will move well up the chain of command in the police department. Right. Uh, this can't be relegated to mid-level police officers. This needs to be a decision made at the top. And the fourth initiative that will be announced by the chief of police today is that this raid will be evaluated by our new 
Citizens Police Review Board, uh, and the, the new Citizens Police Review Board will evaluate our policies and make changes, make recommendations for change in our policies. Mike Ferguson. Uh, this is a progressive. Un understood. Just, understood. Sorry, this Mayor. is a progressive college town. And, we're, and we don't want this to happen again. Understood. May, uh, Mike uh, Ferguson, what's the uproar uh, amongst the public there? Well, the uproar is right now coming not just from the video, which, as the mayor just said, is very difficult to watch. There's an emotional reaction not to just hearing the, the dog get shot, but also the fact that there was a child in the house. But the uproar is coming in the fact that uh, the warrant was served eight days after. And then there's a secondary wave of people being upset because the fact of the matter is this was all over marijuana when no marijuana was found. So it was really a SWAT use on uh, you know, a nonviolent uh, situation and the the end result is that he pled guilty to a misdemeanor charge of having a pot pipe with some residue on it. So, uh, you know the the reaction has been you know just just over you know overwhelming by certain parts of the community over not just the display of force but why it was used and and that's been the precursor to you know the policy changes that the mayor just discussed, which has come really off of a lot of public pressure that's being responded to. Mayor, I want to underscore again that you were not the mayor when this happened, but you are saddled with this problem. Shouldn't federal prosecutors look into the blatant violation of constitutional liberties by these cops? You don't serve a warrant eight days later. There are less intrusive ways to find out what's going on in the house. There's no reason to kill the dog. There's no reason to use deadly force. There's no reason to terrify children, a terror that can live in their memories for the rest of their lives. What these cops did was far more reprehensible than the wildest things that could have happened inside that house on the basis of the information supplied to the judge who issued the search warrant? Well, I, you know, I, I, I'm not in a position to defend the actions. Um, I uh, am waiting for the report. Uh, this whole incident is going to be uh, evaluated. All the facts will be presented, and we'll de deal with it as we need to. I would parenthetically say that I think you're raising uh, an important issue. There, there are a hundred of these uh, SWAT actions a day in this country, and uh, our, ours stands out largely because we videotaped it and uh, presented it publicly. It was actually presented through a Freedom of Information Act. Uh, I think uh, the point that uh, needs to be made is what is the threshold at which these, this police tactic can be used? Um, it, uh, it needs to be reserved for uh, high-risk, dangerous situations, and it needs to be taken out of that, uh, avenue, uh, that uh, venue when uh, we're dealing with nonviolent crime. Right. Mike, the, the, the general uh, principle of law is that you don't issue a search warrant on the basis of the words of an informant only. There has to be other testimony to substantiate what an informant tells you because informants typically have ulterior motives for informing on the people on whom they inform. And the other general principle is you can't use deadly force unless there's reason to believe that deadly force is going to come back at you. Neither of those was followed in this case. Is there any pressure from any source to have federal authorities lock these cops up who did this? Not here locally. We are hearing uh, a citizen, you know, uprising, uh, calling for that. But at this point, I haven't heard that addressed. Uh, we haven't heard any federal we haven't heard any federal pressure pressure on that in the least bit. But you're you're absolutely right. Is that um, you know, there as far as we are being told right now, is that uh, this was based on the testimony or the statement of an informant uh, in mid to late January uh, before the warrant was issued on February 11th. Uh, as far as uh, we know, there was no reason to believe that there were guns in the house. The only thing that we were told is a SWAT commander that I interviewed when covering this story told me that anytime drugs are involved, they tend to use a SWAT because of what they call a history of guns being around, uh, around drugs. Mike, uh, Mike the... big, big picture. This yep. is uh, the middle of Missouri, the middle of the country. This is quintessentially a middle, middle America. Why is it even in a place like this? The police are becoming militarized in the manner in which they enforce local, ordinary criminal law. Well, I think that question could probably apply to all sorts of cities, and that is follow the money, is that there's a federal financial incentive to add paramilitary-style equipment and uh, federal funding of these kind of raids. Um, you know, the, 
you know, right now we're we're being told, hey, the laws say they're illegal. We have to execute the uh, the warrants. But the fact of the matter is, is that Columbia, as the mayor said, is a very progressive uh, town when it comes to social liberties, social personal liberties. And, and recently, the city voted to more or less decriminalize small amounts of pot. You basically get the equivalent of a traffic ticket for having small amounts of, of pot. Um, and and yet order. these cops acted as if they were arresting Osama bin Laden. Mike Ferguson, Mayor uh, Bob McDavid, uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Judge.